our amazing, wonderful friend, Vice President Mike Pence, and his wonderful wife, Karen. Thank you. Thank you to all of our great political leaders out there, so many that have been working with so hard over the last three years and we've accomplished so much. And to members of my cabinet in attendance, Secretary Mike Pompeo, Mark Esper, David Bernhardt, June Scalia, Alex Azar, Ben Carson, Dan Broilet, Betsy DeVos, Robert Wilkie, and Administrator Jovita Carranza. Joining us for this cherished tradition are a lot of friends in the audience. Many really have become friends. They are political leaders. They become great friends. That's all I get to meet anymore. That and the enemies and the allies, and we have them all. We have allies, we have enemies. Sometimes the allies are enemies, but we just don't know it. <laughs> but we're changing all that. But thank you all, and thank you all for being here. I also want to welcome foreign dignitaries from more than 140 countries. That's something. <laughs> something. Everyone here today is united by your shared conviction. We know that our nation is stronger, our future is brighter, and our joy is greater when we turn to God and ask Him to shed His grace on our lives. On Tuesday, I addressed Congress on the State of the Union and the Great American Comeback. That's what it is. Our country has never done better than it is doing right now. Our economy is the strongest it has ever been. And for those of you that are interested in stocks, it looks like the stock market will be way up again today. According to the latest Gallup poll that just came out a little while ago, a few minutes ago, American satisfaction is at the highest level ever recorded. Can you imagine? And that's from Gallup, a good friend of mine. 90% of Americans say they are satisfied with their personal lives. How about that? Isn't that something? Just came out today. They must have known I was going to be here. In everything we do, we are creating a culture that protects freedom and that includes religious freedom. As I said on Tuesday in the House chamber, in America, we don't punish prayer. We don't tear down crosses. We don't ban symbols of faith. We don't muzzle preachers. We don't muzzle pastors. In America, we celebrate faith. We cherish religion. We lift our voices in prayer. And we raise our sights to the glory of God. So much of the greatness we have achieved, the mysteries we've unlocked, and the wonders we've built, the challenges we've met, and the incredible heights that we've reached has come from the faith of our families and the prayers of our people. Before America declared independence, patriots in all 13 colonies came together in days of fasting and prayer. In the bitter cold of Valley Forge, Washington and his men had no food, no supplies, and very little chance of victory. Reminded me a little bit of 2016. We had very little chance of victory, except that the people in this room and some others believed we were going to win. I believed we were going to win. But what they did was have an unwavering belief that God was with them. I believe that too. God is with the people in this room. 
before a single skyscraper rose up in New York City. Thousands of poor American families donated all they could to build the magnificent St. Patrick's Cathedral. When Buzz Aldrin landed on the moon, he said, Houston, I would like to request a few moments of silence. Then he read from the Bible. At every stage, our nation's long march for civil rights was inspired, sustained, and uplifted by faith, prayer, and devotion of religious believers. To protect faith communities, I have taken historic action to defend religious liberty, including the constitutional right to pray in public schools. We can also talk about the Johnson Amendment. We can talk about Mexico City policy. We've done a lot. But I also recently took executive action to stop taxpayer dollars from going to colleges and universities that spread the poison of anti-Semitism and bad things about Christianity. We are upholding the sanctity of life, sanctity of life, And we are doing that like nobody has ever done it before from this position. You better get out and vote on November 3rd. Because you have a lot of people out there that aren't liking what we're doing. And we're pursuing medical breakthroughs to save premature babies because every child is a sacred gift from God. Hallelujah. Together we are building the world's most prosperous and inclusive society. We are lifting up citizens of every race, color, religion, and creed. We are bringing hope to forgotten communities and more Americans are working today. 160 million, a little bit short, just a little bit. 160 million, we've never been even close than ever before. Think of it, more Americans are working today. Almost 160 million than ever before are unemployed.